Hey, Ed here, another edition of Ed Talks. Super excited to have Carrie Webster with us. Carrie, welcome to Ed Talks. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. So, Carrie, I, I love everything about you already because I know that you and uh, worked very closely with Dana, one of the best CIOs ever out there. You worked with them for many years. It's Colorado, it's children's hospitals, it's data, you're a nurse, you've blended the tech and nursing and analytics all together. So it's going to be a super fun conversation. So Thanks. ready to jump right in. So Colorado for a while, right? Since 1997. So tell us about what you've been doing in Colorado all these years. Yes, I moved to Colorado in 1997 and started my career here as an ICU nurse in a level one trauma center. And I uh, quickly learned what it was like to be a nurse without an electronic medical record at my fingertips. And um, that that was interesting. When I um, kind of moved from the ICU to labor and delivery, I was responsible for implementing a fetal monitoring system and sort of got my love of project management and marrying technology with healthcare and how it can really be impactful, not only for the caregiver, but for the person receiving the care as well. And I always tell nurses that I work with and physicians, there's nothing more complicated than a human life in your that you hold in your hands every day. Forget about the technology, it'll come. So you can't really break it. And what they do every day is so precious and, and genuine and, and technology should enhance that. So I went into labor and delivery, did that, landed in IT and just kept adding and growing and uh, landed at Children's Hospital in 2017 as the chief analytics officer, the inaugural chief analytics officer. That is super cool. And it's such a beautiful facility. If people have not seen it, you should look it up even online. It's a beautiful facility taking care of these beautiful babies and, and uh, children. And it's it's just an amazing place. I've spent some time there and, and really have hold you and the team and the organization in high regard. Yeah, so you came there as an inaugural analytics officer. You eventually created the Analytics Resource Center. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So the Analytics Resource Center was the result of a strategic planning effort where the organization realized that they really needed to leverage data to advance, to really move into the future, to support research, to support outcomes and exceptional care, and really needed to have a center of excellence to do that. There were multiple, there was a culture of data and a love of data, which was really handy for me, but no overarching strategy, no single place to really anchor to best practices and processes. So I was recruited by Dana, who is my hero, to start the Analytics Resource Center we, I was a team of one, and then we've slowly built the team over the years to almost 70. And uh, we support the analytics across the organization. Two years in, we were recognized uh, from HEMS for uh, stage seven analytics maturity. So that was cool. And then we recertified. We went through a pandemic together um, and supported the organization through that and have done some really amazing things that help our caregivers and our operational leaders really Anchor to their calling, which is caring for these precious children. Yeah. Can you share one or two examples of something that you and your team did that has really helped the organization? So I think two things come to mind. One is we are working in advanced analytics and we're able to predict census. We're able to predict census uh, with 98% accuracy 72 hours out. And that really helps the operational team make decisions about staffing and, you know, where to put resources. But we've taken that one step farther and we're supporting our finance team with an 18-month forecast. And we're about 90% accurate 18 months out. And that's been really handy at, for budgeting season. And for our nursing leaders, use the 18-month forecast to help plan for our respiratory season and get uh, contracts out for contract labor before um, it became too scarce. So that's been pretty exciting. Another thing that we've done that I, I'm really, a, really super proud of is our human resources app that we're calling. We deliver analytics across the continuum of human resources from turnover to diversity, to churn, to team member experience surveys, flu shot compliance, and everything in between, fingertip access for our frontline leaders. 
to help manage and recruit high performing teams. Very cool. I love the fact that you just, these just come right out of top of your head because you've done so many, your team has done so many great things with analytics. So it's not surprising all the accolades that you mentioned. So if I'm listening and I'm just, let's just say I've got some analytics, right? I think most organizations have some analytics, but want to get to this level. Maybe they don't even yet have a chief analytics officer. What's the first step? So I'm going to put you in Dana's role now, CIO. What's the first step you would take? That's a great question. I'm I'm battling in my head the first step. I, I think you really need to understand what you're trying to achieve. And this is what I preach to every data consumer that I talk to. What problems are you trying to solve? And um, I get a lot of people coming to me, wouldn't it be interesting? It's like, well, that's a really good question. It might be interesting. But unless you really know what you're trying to do, what you're solving, it's it's just data. So I think understanding the problems that you're trying to solve would be step one, but a close, close second is getting the right team. And that's something I'm very, very passionate about, making sure that you have the right people with the right, not only skill set, but the passion to do what you need them to do. I've spoken a lot about my team and I hire unicorns. I don't want somebody to just sit behind a desk and do development. I want them to engage and energize and be a part of the team. And that's not everybody, everybody's skill set. So really deliberately selecting those people. And then a really close third is be deliberate about your culture. And I'm also passionate about my culture. I feel like if, if you don't, if you're not deliberate about your culture, your culture will happen at you and there's nothing more painful. Dang, Carrie, you just dropped like three incredible leadership principles on us. And it's this so good. I, I really appreciate uh, what you had to share. One last question for you. So we established in the beginning, you are a nurse, you have this nursing background and you hire these unicorns. You hire presumably individuals who are not clinicians. How do you sort of marry the two? How do you let the people that you hire, the team, kind of understand the clinical aspects of what they do? Uh, that's a great question. I do actually have some clinicians on my team, but I think really helping them connect the dots between their work and the impact. And we do that a number of ways. We shadow, uh, we let them be a part of the team. I, I make them understand the problems. And then I, I help ex you know give them examples and, and what that means. If X, then Y. And I think it's very helpful to see that through a clinician's eyes. But I'm also, on the other side of that coin, able to represent a different point of view to the clinician. And I, I've joked, you know, I'm, I'm multilingual. I speak English, I speak clinical, and I speak technical. And just a little bit of labor Spanish. But you're able to do those cross translations and really be a bridge between those domains and disciplines. Yeah, I, I love that, Carrie. Uh, again, some great practical advice. I, I tell you, I, I would have no hesitation having my children or now grandchildren be part of getting care at Children's Hospital of Colorado because of people like you. And, and I, I know it's not just you. I think a lot of the organizations are similarly wired. So thank you for sharing and giving us your wisdom. And you should add CIO to your title uh, at some point as well. I mean, you're just a great leader. That's what I'm trying to say is you're a great Thank leader. You. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hey, that wraps up another edition of Ed Talks.